Physical attraction is today's hot topic. She's checking out his bulge in his pants, looking at his dick, his six pack. He's looking at her ass, thinking like, damn, I bet she can go with it. Looking at her breasts, physical attraction. That's what today's topic is going to be about. Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Wizzo, and welcome to Wizzo Talk. Why Wizzo Talk? Because I want to know, don't you? Here at Wizzo Talk, I play it like you said, uncut and unedited. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all the hot topics yet to come. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, hit me up in the comments. If you have a hot topic you'd like to discuss, also hit me up in the comments. We're about to talk about physical attraction. Is it all that? We're going to meet my guest on the show, let him do his own intro, and we're going to get right on off into it. Hit him on up right there. Much bliss. My name is Josh, a.k.a. Seven Points of Bliss. It's an honor to be here again. Always glad to have you here. Always glad to have you here. This time I'm changing up a few little things. I have my little cue cards that I'm going to come back to that because I know that it's going to kind of piss some of the women off when I read some of that right there. So, Y'all out there, stay tuned because some of y'all going to get pissed off on that. But we talk about physical attraction. And Josh, this is a topic that uh, you asked me to talk about. So uh, let's let the world know what's on your mind about this physical attraction. Now, when it comes to physical attraction, I truly believe that we live in a world where physical attraction is important, but it also can be an illusion. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because in these days that we live in, Anybody can pay to become beautiful. You know what I mean, yeah. it's not always about what's on the outside as much as it is it on the inside. Right, right. Because I've, I've I've seen in my own life that you can choose someone's very beautiful from the exterior point of view, and on the internal, they're garbage. Garbage. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. So it can be an illusion if you're not looking for the right things, and and. And we just promoted to look for the wrong things in every direction you turn in. You're supposed to be looking for a fat ass, big titties, big lips, right? And all these things you get drawn into, not even realizing that even when you look at the pure essence of nature, the most beautiful things are usually the most dangerous and the most poisonous, right? Right. You know. Damn right. So how do you think we? How do you think we getting drawn into that? Is that something? I mean, where did it come from? From because we looking at her ass, so to speak, and. We all know that just because she got a fine ass don't mean she probably ain't worth the shit in the bed. Or just because he got that bulge in his pants, it could be a towel. And once she moved that towel, it could be a Vienna sausage up under there. It's true. So what do you think? How do you think that's all come about? You know, where do you think that probably that started from? Well, this? I think this is what uh, our pop culture and, and, and society has just pushed out there. You know what I'm saying? It's all about the imagery, and nobody really takes that opportunity to really, really get to know a person. So right. it's like by the time you truly get to know a person, you kind of don't even like them anymore because you you rush through everything. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is all about sex, and then you find out the sex is whack. Just because a person look good don't mean the sex is going to be good, That's especially right. if you putting in all the work. Right. The woman can be a bad bitch all she want, but if she don't know what she's doing, or a man don't know what right. he's doing to please you mentally and then please you physically, you're gonna, that lust is really gonna be gone very fast. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. And it's kind of like if you, uh, nowadays in this, uh, all of these surgeries that's going on, yep. my fiance sent me a, a video and this one lady had fake lips or something. I mean, you can put the lips on her. Mm -hmm. So she got the lips on her, she got the eyebrows, she has the ass, uh, the pants, because now they have the pants yep. that you can put on to make it look like she got that. And now they can do the, I don't know what it's called, a vagina tuck or what. I don't know. They can do that. So all of that is part of the physical attraction. Yep. So if you don't get to know that person, then by the time she you go to bed that night or whatever, you wake up, you don't know who in the hell you didn't woke up to. Not at all. I seen that. Matter of fact, I seen um, some comedians made a video. And it was pretty funny because it was a man and a woman, and they got home together. And the woman told the man, she's like, give me one second. So she starts taking off her eyelashes and her makeup yeah. and her wig. And right. She started taking off her little girdle with the little booty on, like you were saying. And the man was like, oh. He's like, nah, I feel way more comfortable. Give me a second. He started taking off his toupee. <laughs> oh, he took off his beard. Yeah. 
When he yeah. took his shirt off, it was like a little synthetic muscle thing. Right. Like he took that off, and yeah. they looking at each other like, man, we don't even know each other. We, we just know the other. illusion of what we've seen and yeah. what we've introduced to each other. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of uh, what the elders used to call a, a honeymoon phase in a relationship. Right. The right. first three months. Yeah. It's like you really don't even know that person. You got to give them time right. to really expose themselves. Right, right. You know, and, and not just them, and you too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we all will put on a facade for somebody that we truly like, and then our, gradually our true selves will start to come out. Right. So it's like, it's a scary world we live in when it comes to physical attraction because it's all based off one sense, mm-hmm. and that's a sense of sight. Right, right. Just sitting there. So actually, I think, uh, what was the movie? Uh, I think Ray Charles, uh, he was feeling a yep. risk yep. to see making his judgment or whatever. But then again, that's still physical. True. Even though he couldn't see, but he was still touching. Yeah, he could hear so, their voices. Like I he could he could tell how beautiful they were from their voices from as their well. Voice. Right, right. And, and it's just it's just so interesting that when you actually go through certain phases in your life, you start to see some amazing things. Mm-hmm. Like I've been in the like vicinity of some women that people wouldn't even find attractive. And I start to listen to them and get to know them. And they've become some of the more attractive women that I've ever met. Right. Just listen to their frame of mind. And I've been in a room with some of the most beautiful women that most men think they've ever seen. And it's like, the stuff that's coming out of their mouth make them so unappealing. Right, right. Because they don't even know themselves. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's dangerous. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if you don't know yourself, how can you expect to get to know anybody else? Mm-hmm. So they're not taking the time to get to know. It's kind of like on one of the uh, other podcasts. Um, and I can't remember. It may have been the one sex toys in the bedroom where kind of getting to know one another yeah. and find out more about yourself mm-hmm. and about that person and just kind of just go into it blind and not looking at that physical. Because later on, the guy, his penis, I say G part right there, is going to do what it's going to do. Yeah. And if she was attracted to that, and if he was attracted to her butt, it's still to drop the breast. But now, of course, they can go and get all that lifted and nipped and tucked and all that right. stuff also. So you know, but it's it's all that physical attraction, and I don't I don't even know if we'd ever get away from it. I, I think, think it's just I think we will because I've seen cases as to where men, especially in other countries, like I've seen two cases in Japan where men have fallen in love with these women. And they got all this surgery done, and they had children. Their children came out ugly, and they sued these women. What? Yeah. They sued the women. They sued the women because the children came out ugly, and they were under the pretenses that their wife was beautiful, and they were beautiful, so they would have beautiful children. And then when their children came out to be unattractive, and then they found out their wives got surgery, they sued them and divorced them. Oh, man. So that's kind of like, where is that? uh, uh, I can't think of right now. I don't know, Dubai, wherever, where... All you see is the woman eyes. You can't oh, tell yeah. nothing she has on and this. And even that's a dangerous game to play. Right. Like, I don't know. I don't know if you like recall the mask in COVID, like how everybody was wearing the mask. Right. And there was a lot of women, you'd be like, whoa, she's beautiful. Right. And then those masks came off and you were like, Who who are you again? Yeah, yeah. Like, can yeah. you just put your yeah. hands up to yeah. so I can see your eyes? That's how I know you are. Right, right. Now, I'm on I, you know, in all of my little podcasts, how you do a little Google search. So I'm going to read off one of these little things, and I think this may piss some women off. It may not. I don't know. But it's just kind of telling, talking about the income of the woman, which, which one preferred for, for not. And it's like, uh, what is the most attractive feature in men? And this was the, what the woman was saying. It was found that women with low and medium income, low and medium income, find men with muscular arms most attractive, whereas women who have a higher income prefer men with defined abs and a large chest. Mm. So that's a, I mean, where they got that from? When I don't you know. think about it, it makes sense. Yeah. Because the the abs, that's the core, that's the foundation. Right. So if a woman is making more, she's looking for a man with a stronger foundation. That's where if a woman is making less, she's looking for a man with bigger arms because he's working. Mm. He's a working man. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Carry a household on the shoulder. So right. You know what I mean? So, I don't know about that, women. Y'all hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all sound, think about that. It sounds kind of solid. That's, you know, that's pretty deep, though. So, maybe they did a good research on that. That's you know, deep. Something like that. So, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Now, here it is also. Uh, Ten things that a woman will notice about the men at first sight. 
Well, you kind of just let me know if you think mm -hmm. she might. I had a female that was supposed to be on, but she didn't get to make it, so we just got to do what we got to do. So 10 things a woman would notice about a man at first sight, according to Google. You know, his hair, the vibe, the color of his shirt, the fitting of his pants, which we talked about that yeah. a while ago, if you got a bulge in there or not. His hand movement, his posture, shoulder, eyes, response pattern, pattern, and lip movement. So that's saying that 10 things that a woman would notice about a man at first sight. That's really interesting because all growing up, especially like in Chicago, the number one thing I hear women say they pay attention to first is a man's shoes and whether or not they clean. And I didn't even hear that on the list. Oh, no. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Who even... yeah. I don't know who they surveyed or whatever. Yeah. Surveyed, but now when you said the shoes, I was thinking right off the bat that she's looking at how big his shoe is. So that's probably telling her how big his dick is. <laughs> I don't know. From yeah. what I, all, for all I know is where I heard is like they look at whether or not man's shoes are clean. Oh, and that okay. tells a lot about their character. Right. But to me, it kind of doesn't because you can be well kept and have dirty shoes on. You can be doing yard work or anything. You don't know. You can be just running errands or something right. like that. So, right. I mean, that never really made sense to me. But in the culture of Chicago, gym shoes are pretty important. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? But, right. I guess around here in Texas, they were walking around with flip flops on, maybe and socks, cowboy and, boots, dirt, and all that. And that's more manly here than Jordan. So now I have another one right here. Is uh, ten things that a man to a, a man, a woman, find, a man is find attracted about a woman. Get that a notice about a woman. It's get that shit up. This live, so I'm not gonna replay it. <laughs> whatever it's uncut and unedited right here. So if I stumble over some shit, I don't. Y'all just gonna hear it. So the man noticed about the woman a sense of humor, intelligence, the eye contact, confidence, body type. Where well, we go with that physical again? Physical, physical, physical traits, the dress sense, a smile, listening skills, and kindness. Those are all important. Yeah. So definitely, um, it's it's still some all important. And and some of them were not necessarily the physical, huh? No, they yeah. weren't. But I definitely, I mean, even though a lot of this stuff when it comes to physical is is superficial, but it's gonna be the first thing you're gonna draw in on. Like if you don't find them physically appealing at first, it's gonna be like, uh, right. Not too often when you find somebody unattractive, you give them an opportunity to open up to you unless you're just making them your friend. Right. And then that's when those things tend to happen when you start to be like, dang, this person is becoming more attractive. They're nice. And right. Right. So it's just giving a, giving that person that time to get to notice them, but you were saying that you'd probably think we'll get past some of that physical. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, a woman can walk by right now and she know exactly what she's doing when she has them gym pants on yeah. and have that thing all up in there. And if we look, then she's offended. But they know what they came out for. They know what they was dressing for. <laughs> and you know, just just even listening to those two different lists of what men look at and what women look at. Right. A lot of the stuff that men look for is, is seems a lot more deeper. There's mm -hmm. a lot more depth to that list. Right, right. As opposed to some of the stuff that's on the list for the women. It's right. kind of superficial. Right, right, right. But in the end, once you looking at she's looking at his bulge, mm -hmm. she's looking at his abs and his shoes and looking at all that, and he's looking at everything on her. They can still get in the bed and it will be garbage. It won't be what the shit. Because the Even chemistry well. is not there. The yeah. chemistry is not there. You can't force that. And I feel like a lot of times when it comes to a, a specific look or a woman, we'll try to force it. Right. As far as that, that, that's what she feel like she wanted the man. Right. She had to take the toxic traits just to be with a certain look. You know what I mean? It's very interesting. But men to do it too. If they feel like it's a quote unquote bad bitch, and that's why I was telling you earlier, like right. uh, the young guys on my team at work, we were speaking today, and I was trying to explain to them, like, man, your your bad bitch ain't necessarily always gonna be what she's cracked up to be, because right. at the end of the day, a lot of these women come with very bad traits when they feel like they look good, they feel like they do whatever, mm -hmm. when they look a, a specific kind of way, and society has gotten to the point where everybody feels like they're a bad bitch. Right. Like I remember back in the day, like. And I don't want to sound like an asshole when I say this, but the ugly girls were nice. Right. Now everybody a bad bitch. So it's like not everybody got a shitty attitude. Right, right. Well, you know, just on that, you know, I worked over in Iraq as 
a few years back in, I don't know, six or something like that. And everybody to the guys were, was pretty mm -hmm. because they was over there and they was looking for whatever come their way. So she can be missing all her teeth and, and halfway had her hair done or whatever. They were just trying to release some pressure mm -hmm. and trying to get over there. So she was over in Iraq and she was a bad, which I don't call women bitches, but she was a bad bitch to them over there, then, you know. Well, I've seen that. I've seen that mentality too, man. Yeah. I never served, but definitely when I was in high school, we had in school suspension, <laughs> and it'd be a bunch of guys and one girl, and that girl could yeah. be the ugliest girl in school. But when you in there all day, yeah, you know she she's she mad that. as hell, you know. She started to look good. You be like, right, right. You know, what I'm saying you would never try to holler at an outside of in school suspension. And I didn't right. seen it, right? You know, and this and this it, it's even funnier because like uh. I had got in trouble with the law and I got locked up for 24 hours. And right. then it was a, a transgender dude in there. And some of the guys were trying to holler at that dude. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, bro, this, you know, this all dudes on this side. Right, right. There's no women. Right. But the dude was still flirting. I'm just sitting there, like, please, God, I just want to go to sleep. Yeah, I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that was a, that was a rough 24 hours, man. Right. Just listen to these guys try to back to a, a transgender. So it was very interesting seeing that and just. It's just, it's crazy, man. Right. People doing that desperate. Well, they, they, they uh, have a lot of that, uh, I mean, that physical attraction, you know, so they up in there locked up, whatever, and then they, you know. That pressure, man. That pressure, you know, <laughs> you know, you got to, you know, I mean, there's other ways to relieve that pressure, but I guess they just regular uh, do it's what so. they do. So, I don't know. But the physical attraction is what we're kind of talking about. Well, that is our topic, the physical attraction. And uh, I'm just, just, and I know you say you think we'll probably get away from that at some point in time, mm -hmm. but I've seen preachers, which people think that they're above whatever, physically attracted to someone and they're cheating and doing whatever, you know. I'm you, you know, I don't understand it, but I mean, I looked at my girl's ass, I'm like, damn, she fine the mother, you know, and still look at some women when they walk by whatever, because here they are, half- they put it out there. Right there. And then the guys, not to say that it's all women, you know, you got the guys now because they're wearing the, the straight tight jeans or whatever, and they're just attracted, I guess, to the wrong thing. You need yeah. to get to know the person because it's just so quick to uh, to get a divorce nowadays. You don't, I don't think you really find the 30 and 40 and 50 year marriages no more, you know. That's scary uh, too. It, yeah, yeah. Do you know, think about like, because at the end of the day, you're going to want somebody that you can, know as well as you know yourself and right. grow with. Right. You know what I mean? I don't think people look at situations like that and be like, can I grow with this person anymore? It's, I think a lot of people look at things temporarily. And I say that because when you think about physical attraction, it's all temporary. Yeah. None of that stuff is going to last forever. At the end of the day, we're, none of us when we get older are going to look like how we look when we are younger. And I don't think people think past that, especially when it comes to like my generation and younger. A lot of these girls and guys getting tattoos all over their faces. And that's like, do you think about what it's going to look like when you turn 60? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't think they put that in consideration. But at the same time, I don't think a lot of them think of their life expectancy going that far. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's a whole other issue. Yeah. Because it's kind of like, we're not, we not looking at ourselves correctly. You know what I mean? We push a lot of stereotypes upon ourselves, especially how the imagery is forced on a women to look a specific kind of way. Right. And it's not taught enough that you are good enough as you are and right. to keep growing and become better. Right. They got about all this trash to put on their face. And right. Guys yeah. feel like they got to look a certain type of way. It's just... Yeah, cause it's, some of them wearing makeup too. Yeah, some of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know. A lot more dudes are painting their nails now. Yeah. Like back when, back when I was younger, Dudes painted their nails, but it was black. That's right. about all you see. And now they, they you know, they they doing the pink and all that. And it's yeah. not, it's not crazy to me. I mean, I understand it's an artist, but at the same time, it's kind of like, we, where are they going with this? What agenda are they trying to push? Right. Because lines are becoming so blurred now. It's getting harder and harder to truly see who a person is. Right. You know what I mean? Like you can go out on a date with a girl, and then find out like maybe like three days in, and there's really a guy, Ooh. and you like. What happened? Yeah. But then that leads right back into the physical attraction because right. anybody can buy a certain aesthetic. You know what right. I mean? Right, right. Yeah. So it's kind of like, what am I looking at? You can't even afford to 
just look at a person no more. You really gotta get to know them truly. Right. Meet their family. Right. You might have to ask to see a birth certificate. A driving license. So even that can be stuff. even that can be switched right. up if that's what yeah. you, if you identify as something different. Yeah. You might need to see a birth certificate. Where'd you where'd you come out that motherfucker right. ass? Like, right. You know what right. I mean? right. Right. I need right. to see what you came out the oven ass, right. freshly baked. Yeah. What so what yeah. are you? Yeah. Yeah. Because. Even in the songs, it's getting sketchy, bro. Like, I, I be telling my homeboys, man, it's not enough for me to hear these rappers talking about something. I need to see uh, some fat ass and titties. I need to, you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't want to hear yeah. a person rap about a vagina or something, yeah. bro. Because yeah. even a dude can get a fat ass and titties now. Man, it sure can. So it's, yeah. a, it's a whole illusion that comes along with you just seeing. Because your eyes are just, that's just one sense. Right. You know what I mean? Do you think that uh, as like a man, you know, having a son or the woman having a son or daughter that we need to start teaching them better, which we we, we probably got attracted to our feet, our part by physical attraction. So do as uh, now as we're older, I always talk about breaking the cycle with my mm -hmm. kids, making sure That's my kids, important. you know, black and poor, want to make sure they learn how to swim. You know, I want to make sure that I'm there for them a lot of stuff because some fathers as we did a podcast before, that's not always there for their kids and True. stuff like that. So do you think that as men, if we have a son, we should teach them, hey, ignore that ass, ignore them breasts and that right there. Get to know that person, that woman, before you see all that. Now, or should the, if the mother, if the father's not in the picture, that's something that the woman. So my question is, you think we need to start teaching the guys now the ones now that's born now is they're gone. But before when they start thinking about sex, middle school, so what is that, twelve or thirteen maybe or something like mm -hmm. that? We can't start with that age. So we have to go below that. Five, six. I mean, do we need to start teaching them? Yeah, I mean at what point, I at think, what age? I think I think we do. And I think that it has to all begin from uh the birth. Right. To, not just teach them to look at something physical, but to understand another person's spirit and their soul. Right. You know what I mean? It's something so much deeper than just the body. That vessel is, is temporary, and, we, and none of us are our bodies. Right. We're our minds. They guide these bodies. So if we teach people to fall in love with people's minds to begin with, right. you know what I'm saying? Because if you think about this, man, if we go back six or seven generations and we look at our great, great, great grandparents and who they were marrying, they weren't marrying the baddest bitches back then. They didn't have to. They found women that they truly loved and that understood right. them and they know they can ride out hardships with. Right. And that's who they built with. You know what I'm saying? And like when you look at a lot of like uh Hispanic families, like man, you know what I'm saying? Like like some of these dudes back in the days, bro, I see like when they older now, do you look at their wives and you can tell they're not looking at looking at them for specific things. Right. And they love each other genuinely. It don't have nothing to do with their body, man. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Like man, it, like culture is is so much deeper when when people find out how to love each other through their cultures. They find out who they are. It's a wholeness. You know what I mean? People was loving people that knew how to cook back in the day, right. and, and that wasn't that that wasn't the reason why they loved them. Right. But it has something to do with it because it's like, oh man, she can cook for me. Yeah. If she yeah. can cook for me, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She can love me, right? I can provide for her better. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it was like it's a it's a it was a, a cohesive thing with the team. It didn't have anything to do with looks all the time. You know what I'm saying? And if you dive deeper, even back to the older days, right. when people were marrying their children off to bring a family together, two families together, it didn't have anything to do with looks. Yeah. People had to understand how to love each other. Like they may not necessarily have one to be together, mm -hmm. but they had to learn how to work with that because they were bringing in two, they bringing two families together. Right. So they had to learn how to be cohesive. And now, when we looking at things now, it's not. I don't think none of these people are thinking about uh, a future. They just think about instant gratification, and then that's only going to take you so far because your looks, yet again, are just an illusion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because once yeah. you learn who that person truly is, it's only so deep you can dive. They're shallow. Yeah. And a lot of these people are truly shallow when they're based yeah. on just external things. Exactly. Yeah, I feel you there. We're talking about physical attraction is our main topic that we're talking about. And uh, just trying to see, I mean, even if there's a way to get away from that. I know you already say that we probably will. When? <laughs> I don't know because it's, it seems like everything is kind of changing. And I'm not necessarily always picking like the woman. For, that's why I wish the other female could have been here. 
So she kind of gone and say, wait a minute, y'all get the shit up off of us. But now, you know, the women got the baby hair coming out the side. And mm-hmm. some of them got their whole head pulled over. They ain't all that baby hair. Yeah, no, you know, wigs too. Yeah, yeah, you got, you got that, you know, the wigs. So you just really never know what you're going to get. And especially if you're out at the club, you'd have some yeah. drinks. I mean, the men don't get bad too. Yeah, I'm about to get on them next. Because I didn't see brothers out here getting fake beards, yep. bro. I didn't yep. see them out here with the toupees, yep. getting whole fades. Yep. And it's like, why are we so scared to be ourselves, man? Just be ourselves. Because you feel like somebody's not going to find you attractive. Right. At the end of the day, you got you to gotta feel like there's going to be somebody for you out there. Even right. if it's not going to be who you think everybody else should think that you should be with. And, uh, and a lot of the times, that's what a lot of these young boys... And women are scared of what their friends gonna say. Oh, right. girl, he ugly. Why yeah. does it matter? Yeah. If yeah. you love him, you love him. You love him. And if he it. loves you, right. He loves you. Like man, like we, like we just so stuck on looks, and it's yeah. it's kind of terrifying because it's like it's gonna get worse. Right. The further they go in the generation, it's gonna get worse. And then it's not even like back in the days you can see how like. Two ugly people will make a pretty baby, man. I didn't see two beautiful people make ugly right. children. Right. People don't even think about what their kids might look like. They just think their kids automatically gonna be beautiful. Just like that whole thing I just told you with the guy. Right. Yeah. They married the lady, yeah. and they had kids, and the kids came out ugly, and then he found out she had plastic surgery. Yeah. And, and you know, people quick to lie say, "Oh, that baby's so pretty." Oh no! And no, <laughs> you gonna go and tell them. Yeah. Say yeah, they tell you, ask you about it, that baby. Yeah, my daughter was born. The nurse like this is such a beautiful baby. I was, I turned to her, I was like, you don't got a lot of me. Man. She looked kind of funny. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. And then my daughter, like a few weeks later, she grew into it. I was yeah. like, man, thank you. I was like, woo. You know what I'm saying? I was gonna love her regardless, but right, I was like, right. yo, she looking kind of funny, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, you know what I mean? And people yeah. will lie about them babies being pretty, yeah, man. They will, they will lie about it. But they be saying hard. some funny stuff. Yeah. Like when they know the baby ugly, they be like, oh, you're so precious. Yeah, yeah. Kind of Bless his little heart. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's that, it's that physical attraction. And I know you were saying how you think we'll, it'll probably change. But me, I just, I just see it getting worse because of all of the options and all of the uh, accessories yep. that's so available now. You know, even like you were saying with the men, with the toothpaste. And I saw something on Facebook a while back, and uh, the woman was saying she want a real man. Mm-hmm. And then the guy was saying, you say you want a real man, but yet he listed all the things we were talking fake about a while ago that's fake on her. Right. And then, as you talked about the movie a little while ago, all the things that was fake on him. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, where's the realness? It, oh, is there any realness? Because when you go out there, you really don't know what you're going to get. I guess like old Forrest Gump said, it's just like a box of chocolates. Yeah, no. You just don't ever know what you're going to get. I mean, so, I think, honestly, real is becoming an illusion because we're dealing with stuff like augmented reality now and virtual reality. Oh, man. And, and people are, people thinking that that stuff is real. Yeah. So it's getting to a point where it's like, what is real? Yeah. Like people are, they, they're redefining it. Just yeah. like they're redefining it's, everything else. Like yeah. natural. Yeah. Natural beauty is almost like organic fruit. Mm-hmm. When I was young, I thought every all the fruit that grew was organic. Right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And now it's kind of like natural beauty. Like, for instance, I was online and I seen this girl and she had a wig on, eyelashes, a makeup was done, and there was another girl who commented on herself said, girl, you're so naturally beautiful. Mm. And then I put a comment like, where? All of this stuff she put on her face. This is yeah, not even what yeah, she really looks yeah, like. Yeah. And they blasted me in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm the one that's blind, and I'm trying to explain to them, like, natural beauty means you don't need any of that. Yeah. Take the wig off, take all that off. Right. And then same thing with guys. Like, a lot of women are saying nowadays, like, a beard for a man is like a makeup for a woman. Yeah, it's not the same. You know what right. I mean? Like this, if you naturally grew it, not like I said, the other guys getting those two pay beards. Right. Now that is weird. I, yeah, I seen yeah. some studs get them too. Yeah, what? Because they want to be dudes all the way, so they with the little beard. I just right. seen them put the fake beard on little kids, just yeah, having fun. It's like, yeah. where's the line drawn? Because you're not gonna really be able to tell what really is pretty mm-hmm. soon, man. No, it's the way things are changing now. I mean, what? That, that illusion. Yeah. What is what is real? We, you're not going to know at all. And that's why we really got to start teaching the children 
what to look for of the people because it starts to get to a point where we'll feel like our mates, as long as our mates are attractive, that we'll put up with anything that they throw our way. Right. And, and that's not going to lead to healthy relationships for the current generation or the generations to come yeah. because they're going to be very shallow and they're going to be looking at everything external. And the external world is not the real world. It's all a facade. Everything you see, like people think like McDonald's is good. It looks good. Everything that looks good isn't good for you. For sure about that. So it's like when you get past the looks and start to understand what's the nutritional value of that person. Right. Spiritually, mentally. Right. Right. You know what I mean? You know, I'll tell you back, uh, I've been with my fiance a little while here. I don't know if she's going to watch this or I'm going to just say some years. She'd probably be like, well, how many years? <laughs> Shit, I don't know. But anyway, but, and she reminded me, but when we first started talking or whatever, she said that, and I don't remember, she said, you told me how many bills you had, and you had this, and you had that, and you had all this, and you didn't make no money. You didn't. I said, well, shit, you should have appreciated that shit. Because I wouldn't come, I mean, you come up here to know that shit, you got to get with a broke motherfucker. So if you thinking that I got a whole lot, well, I would actually bro, but I'm just saying, oh, you know, I'm not driving this and I'm not driving that. And But to her, you know, she she didn't care about any of that. Mm-hmm. You know, she also be telling me I need a tan because mm-hmm. I'm a little bit light bright, but yeah, that's just the way that is. But I'm just saying, I let her know everything up front, you know, about whatever, about what she was getting into, what I am, what I am. And she should appreciate that because some guys and some women, will get there and be lying about their status or whatever, or that woman may see, or, or that man may see that she's driving that mm-hmm. Mercedes or whatever, you know, and he's blinged all out or whatever. So to me, that looked like, a, well, maybe he can afford that or maybe he can't, but if he got that Mercedes and he's living at home with his mama, it's a problem. And that yeah. goes into another old saying that I used to hear all the time when I was young, fake it till you make it. Right. And I've known quite a few guys that dress in, elaborate suits and drive fancy Jaguars and right. they can't up they can't really really can't afford it. Right. You know what I mean? That's almost like uh looking at people's lifestyle on Facebook. If you're going off what you see on any type of social media, yeah, you know, you already have some type of mental illness because I know plenty of people who going to Mexico and Dubai and oh, all man. these places, bro. And they and when they come back home, they don't have no place to go. Yeah, you know what I mean. They they've been evicted because they ain't pay their rent. They yeah. try to live these trips just right. to take these pictures and show off. And it's like you really have nothing to show for. Right. Just right. like people who uh like to live their lives in the clubs and don't be paying their rent. Right. You know what I mean. Like back when I was younger, people were like you don't go to the club. I was like I pay my rent. Yeah. My 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 apartment yeah. is the yeah. club. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. why I turn up back. Yeah. Hell yeah. I tell you, uh, it's been, I don't know, some years back, I used to drive a 79 Buick LeSabre. And uh, shit, it had the little quarter window and it was knocked all out and shit. I had duct tape over it or whatever and shit like that. Couldn't get no one. I blow at some woman. She couldn't get a woman to look my way. Couldn't get her to do shit. But what she should be saying is shit, he might have a lot of money. He yeah. might not be driving that car, but he might have some ends. But she looking at trying to see what I have. Mm. You know, he don't have this and he don't have that. I don't have no real big expensive ass car note, but you know, I'm making it do what it do. And it's very interesting that um, I know women seek providers, but if you just specifically going off what you see yet again, it's always going to be an illusion because once you really get into the game and you start seeing the people who actually have money, you start to see that the people who really have money don't really blow it on the things that you can see. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you were talking about that car. Yeah. It's kind of like, bro, some of the wealthiest people probably riding around like that. They're not all riding around in, in phantoms and mm-hmm. whatever type of other fancy car there is. A lot of these people riding around in little hoopties, you wouldn't even know they were rich. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've seen pictures of rappers, and the black rappers hold up thousands of dollars and hundreds, and then it'd be a little rich white dude, and he hold up like $2 in singles. Right. Yeah. Because... That's not, they don't have, they don't have to have yeah. that yeah. on them to prove yeah. anything. Right. That that brings me back to the, the Facebook post, and you probably saw it, whatever, about the black guy that was dressed in head to toe with a $1,000 chain on, and, you know, mm-hmm. dressed down and got $10,000 worth of stuff on or more, really couldn't fucking afford it. And then here's the, the, I guess it was the white guy over there, all this shit came from Walmart or whatever, wasn't name branded, wasn't this, it wasn't that, you know, but that's just physically attracted to, mm-hmm. they're attracted to that. The know? image. That, yeah. The yeah. illusion of wealth. Well, And yeah. it's very, it's like, man, it's just, it's weird that it's like that because it's like, 
But you can have all this stuff on and not have a dime in your pocket. You spent all your money on trying to have that fake illusion, that yeah. facade. Right. You know, and then the guy who's really walking around with the money looks like a bum. You wouldn't even think twice to even talk to him. Yeah. But the thing that's really important for people to understand is when you got your own, you're not looking at what another person got. Yeah. And, and you know what I'm saying? And that really be, and it really hit home really when it comes to men. Because men don't look at a woman and be like, man, I wonder how much money she got. I mean, it might be some dudes who do it. Yeah. But majority men, when, when you working and you're doing your own thing, you look at a woman and you don't be like, man, I wonder what, what, how much she making. Right, right. Now, I have seen some women that are like, man, you know, they don't care what a guy looks like. If yeah. he looks attractive to them, they'll build that man up. I've right, seen it. Right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. I've lived that reality. I've seen yeah. it like, man, yeah. like yeah. they don't like I've been seeing some women that take you on some trips. Yeah. They see your potential, yeah. all that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. women don't always be shallow like that, but you can tell the women that are are typically the ones who don't have anything. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for that come up because they want somebody to be able to take care of them. Right. And the same thing with men when they're looking at women and they think that they got to be looking for something because they they feel like they lack it in themselves. Right, right. So they need somebody else to provide. Right, right. I agree with that. I hear that. I have a female friend told me once before, she said, what's up? I don't need no man money. I just want the companion. I just yeah. want him there. You know, someone to travel with, just like you were saying, and do these things. She said, I make my own money. She make like six figures or whatever or something. She said, I make my own money. I just looking for someone and she ran across a couple of them, but they just, you know, they wouldn't, I guess, up to par or whatever or something. Well, maybe now you have some women that I've also heard that, you know, they, they tired of training the man, so to speak, mm -hmm. and teaching him to do this and do that. They want somebody that's already ready. She, you know, come out ready. I don't want to have to groom you or whatever. But yeah. when when is that ever a thing though? Like no no one person that you find are you gonna not have to train them in a in a sense. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because they, everybody has to learn and grow to the other person. Exactly. So right. either way it go, you're gonna have to be trained to a certain extent to right. be acceptable to yep. even be able to please that person. Yeah. Whether it's physically, mentally, or spiritually. Right. Because right. we don't know each other, so we're going to have to learn each other as a class. Right, right. And and speaking on that learning and, and all, because, you know, my lady now is certain things like, and you might can relate to this also, where if we're walking out by the street, mm -hmm. you know, she can't walk to right. the street. She ha I have to move her around to this way. Yeah, not even, yeah. I have an issue you pull like, what you doing? And then yeah. you like. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, you can't be over there like that. I didn't, so, man. I yeah. didn't have instances where I opened the door for women and, and people around like, yeah, you open the door for your girl. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know, people are saying yeah. Yeah. to her like, oh man, you, he, your guy opened the door for you. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, when did that even not become yeah. a thing? You don't want your lady to feel special. Like yeah. that's weird. Yeah. yeah, and that's something that I teach my daughter. I let her know, hey, your man is supposed to open that right. door for you. If you at the restaurant eating, he's have to hold your chair or whatever. And if he's too embarrassed to do that, then you put his ass in check. You know, go on and treat him, you know, like you want to be treated, you know. So we just talking about how you have to, so to speak, train them, you know, and they have to learn. And they have to learn the things that, you know, we have to learn and they have to learn because uh, I can't think of an example right off now because I'm on camera. But with my girl, I have to learn to do some things also, mm -hmm. you know, and she, I'm steady teaching her, so to speak, the things that I like to do, which is all just old school type shit. Yeah, I you think know, I think just, exactly what you what you speaking on. They refer to it today as love language. Okay, there you go. You know what I'm saying? Everybody yeah, has yeah. to learn the other person's love language. Some yeah. people love language is verbal, so they want to know that you love them by you telling them. Right. Some people love language is action. They want you to show them that right. you love them right. through the things that they like to do. They want to know that you're you know learning them. So right. do what they like to do, and they'll do what you like to do. Right. But I think a lot of the times that people get it confused is. The most dangerous thing you can do in a relationship is love a person how you want to love them. Because mm. people don't understand. Like, you have to love them how they need to be loved. Right. It's not even loving them how they want to be loved. Right. You have to love a person how they need to be loved. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? And there's different levels to it. Right. And, you know, on that love, now, um, you have people that show love and not verbally mm -hmm. express it and, and, and speak it, you know, so to speak. And... Uh, because some men and women can go and come up, which women like to hear it more than men. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to make it seem like I'm always saying a woman this, a woman that. But the man can come up and go and tell you I love you and, and I miss you and I love you and blah, blah, blah. 
and tell you a whole bunch of shit just to get the draws. Yeah. And don't mean any of it. But then you can have this other one over here. He's doing things for you. I mean, I just, you know, he's little things, you know, a bunch of little things. He's fit, taking your car. He didn't fill it up with gas. He didn't done this. Well, some of them say, well, he's supposed to do that or whatever. But my point is, they show love in different ways. Yeah. Because, you know, here I am in my mid-50s. And I've told my mom, she's gone now, that I love her probably twice in my life. So if I'm not telling my mom who gave me life right. and birth that I love her, and then it's not as easy for me to tell you like that. But some men can just spit it out like it's nothing to it. You know, going to say, oh, you know, I love you, baby. I love you, baby. And But for other guys like me, it's a challenge for me. It doesn't mean that I don't love her, but it just the way I deal with it, the way I cope with it, you know. So I don't know where I was going with that, but no, I, get, I was going I get somewhere it. with I get, it, I got, but I lost I, it. I, I, I got you exactly okay. where you're going. See, what I picked up from what you were saying is this. English language or any type of verbal language, which is actually one of the last forms of communication. Right. Right? The first form of communication would be energy. You're reading a person's energy. The second would be body language. Right. When you're speaking through your actions and they have emotions tied to your actions, they're way more powerful than any word. Yep. Because the word, the word can be finessing. You can finesse like a motherfucker yep. with them words. Saying, yeah. But how are you finessing with action? Like, okay, I, I I guess a guy could finesse with action, buying girl stuff and all that, but it's still done. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of like you still spent your time and your effort doing something to please that other person. Through your actions. So you're still showing something as opposed to something superficial like a, a words. And everybody yeah. don't find words to be superficial, right. but some people can see the emptiness in words. Right. And some people see the value in action when you're actually doing something that actually has value. Like you see some men take their women's car and fill their car up. Yeah. Some men might take that girl car and detail cleaning and go take yeah. us to the car wash. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's to, to a man, that's their love language. You know right. what I'm saying? Some women might be like, girl, you know he love you because he get your hair and your nails done. Yeah. That's their love language. Right. And they yeah. feel like that's yeah. what that yeah. is. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. But everybody doesn't have that same thing that they want you to do. And that's mm -hmm. the importance when it comes to learning. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. you and your mom might have had that. Y'all have that level. Right. And so you don't have to say that. No. You don't have to say I love you all the time. No. No. When she calls you and she needed something, you was there. You was there. That's love. Yeah. Already. Yeah. That's exactly Just like right. with your kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you might not tell them you love them all the time, but you didn't show up to every damn game. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You was there whenever they needed you. Yeah. Well, you don't need to say I love you yeah. every day all no, the time like no. that. You already know. You must have been listening to me talk about yeah. those little things. Yeah. 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 I pay attention to everything yeah. you say yeah. because yeah. It, yeah. it's powerful like that. And you can just yeah. tell the love in it when you speak on it. Right. Because you don't just show up just to show up. You show up and you remember. Oh, yeah. Most and definitely. when you remember it, that means a lot. Like, you, that means you genuinely were there. Yes, yes. most definitely. Y'all, in case you was wondering, a tick there on in late, a time being late, or whatever the hell I was just trying to say, we talking about that physical attraction. You know, we're going to chop it up for a few more minutes. I know you got a time schedule you got to make. I'm with and, you. And, uh, yeah, just to let y'all know, this right here, we this is the first podcast that I am shooting in my own personal storage unit that I had converted to a podcast. And it's pretty cool. It's too. pretty cool. Got my logo in the back, you know, or whatever, and got it painted up, got my lights. Got my mics. Uh, you might get just a little bit of feedback. You hear the air conditioner running. It just kind of chimed off. But uh, it's mine. And I own it. You know, I don't have to rent anywhere or anything like that. So anybody that's out there looking to uh, to build or something or, or want to get one started, whatever, hit your boy up. And I'll let you know how I got mine going and how I got it started. It's also on my YouTube page. But check it on out, though. But again, when we talk about physical attraction, you just never know what you're going to get. Not See, it may change later. It may change at some point in time. But it's the physical attraction. And we have to take time to get to know that person. True. And look past that. Because especially if you're trying to wonder about what is what is she like in bed. Yeah. Which is cause, just because we've already said. Just because she got a fat ass and fat breast, lips on and all of that. Doesn't mean that she's good in the bedroom. True. It's, yeah. it's so funny because you said, like Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. Yeah. Really, they should change that to physical attraction is like a box of chocolates. Because yeah. you truly don't know what you're going to get. No. All them chocolates might look the same, yeah. but when you bite into them, they're going to be different. Man, you might throw yeah. up or you yeah. might not even yeah. like the flavor. Yeah. yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. It's deep like that. Will we and don't go and have a few drinks. Cause the lines are they they blur, man. Know. Because the, the vision it, just to go off one sense is it's it's very it's terrifying these days. Right. Because you can meet a woman that's so beautiful, you can meet a man that's so beautiful. And you never truly know what their intentions are. You never right. truly know who they are until something goes astray. Yeah. And then by then, it's probably too late. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's a lot of situations where I know these women get drawn in or these men that get drawn in into big situations the way they might get drugged because right. they're focused on the illusion of what they're seeing. Right. They don't know the monster that lies within. Mm. They get drugged. Some of these women that get killed. Some of these men get robbed and killed. Right. Like, I don't know if you remember like a few years ago, Cardi B got into a big uh, yeah. debate about, you know, drugging yes. men yeah. Yeah. and doing something to them and, and, and robbing them. Right, right. Yeah, I remember And that. I know that they were drawn in by how she looked. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I know women fall for that too. Yeah. And it's a dangerous game to be playing yeah. when you're not understanding the energy that a person holds within and who they are. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's why you really can't just be looking at a person right. on, a, on an exterior level. And it takes time to really get to know a person internally. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a dangerous game, man. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree with that. It's dangerous and you 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 don't have no idea what you're gonna get. You just don't. You gotta get to know that person, take time to get to know them. But I'm not saying anything to anybody that's out there that don't know that. They're not gonna use that and put that into effect. That uh bull just gonna walk by and she's gonna see it. And on one of my other podcasts, one of the other ladies said she prefer a man that's normal or more, not to say smaller, but average because mm-hmm. the one that's hung like a horse coming up in there and, and don't know what he's doing or do what he's doing and she's not getting any pleasure out of that. But then you have the one that, that like that or whatever. So I don't know. But when, when, you, when you, I had a point where I was fixing to go somewhere else with that, but I, shit, I just dropped my train of thought about it. But it's all just the, the physical attraction. And hopefully one day we'll take time to go ahead and get to know that person that, you know, so we can get back to those 30 and 40 year lifetime marriages and stuff like that. You know, there's a few of them out there now, but there's not, you know, back in the day, you know, she didn't look at that. Like you said, you know, he was doing what he do or whatever. And, and the marriages was lasting 50, 60, 70, 80 years. You know, just because just, people looked at it, the people didn't look at it how they looked back then. They looked at the skills that they each other had and what they were broke bringing to the table. Right. And now it's like people will say, "What do you bring to the table?" But it's usually all like monetary type of yeah. things. It's, yeah. it's not to be a provider doesn't necessarily mean you just have to have money. Right. You know what I mean? Like I try to explain to a lot of women, what are you gonna do when money is worthless? And that's all your man can do is bring home money. Yeah. Like, he can't build you a home. Like, these are the type of skills that men had back in the day. They, oh, they yeah. can build you a yeah. home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. can make you a log cabin or something like that. Like, men don't have these type of skills anymore. And it wasn't until I came out here to Texas when I started to realize I didn't have some of these skills either. You know? For yeah. real. Like, yeah. I always yeah. thought it was about money. But I liked it, nature. Yeah. And I always knew how to build stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could make, I could build a tin or I could, I could make a log cabin. I knew how to do that type of stuff before yeah. I came here. Yeah. But when it came down to, like, hunting and fishing, I didn't know these things right. until I came out here and I started to realize that there are principles of a man that every man should know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we lost a lot when we stopped doing rites of passage for men. Right. Because it's like, everything started to go into what a person looked like and not what a person was capable of doing. Yeah. And I don't know exactly when that started happening. I think it might have been around like the 80s and 90s or something like that, man. Yeah. Because yeah. rap music started painting a certain picture of women and women started looking at certain images of men yeah. and just yeah. having money yeah. and yeah. this quick money type of life and cars. And, yeah. and it's like, man, what happens when all that stuff is worthless and yeah. you can't get it no more? Yeah. Then what can you do? Can she cook? Because I hear a lot of men complain about a woman can't cook. But then again, we raised in a type of society where a lot of these boys are raised by their mother, so a lot of the men can cook now. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the men can clean for yeah. themselves. They don't yeah. even need no women for that kind of stuff. So right. it's like, all right, well, if the men is doing what the women do, the women and the women are doing what the men do is kind of yeah. Yeah. questionable. Because I heard a man online, he said that like a few days ago, and it kind of blew my mind. The man, he sat there and said, nowadays, men have to do 20 times the work to get a woman 10 times lesser 
than what the women were back in the day. Mm. And I'm like, whoa, that's yeah. whole. Yeah. But then you think about it vice versa too, though. I mean, the women don't really have to do too much to get a man because they all looking for the same 1% of, of men, the 1% to 3%. Right. A lot of women looking for men that's big ballers. Yeah. A lot of these dudes are big ballers, though. Nope. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. <laughs> and then so, when you find a guy who you feel like is a big baller, it's a facade. Because yeah. there's a lot of videos out here nowadays where it'd be a guy and he try to holler at a girl. I don't know if you've seen it. I've seen those. And yeah. then she don't pay him on attention. Yeah. Then he'll get a Lamborghini and she's like, oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know he was driving that. Yeah. And then yeah. he get her in the car, have a conversation with her, and he tell her, like, it's not even my ride. Yeah. And then she want to get out with an attitude. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of yeah. like, well, you didn't pay attention to him when he was displaying who he truly was. Right. But then when he got into that car, you fell for that facade because you side. thought, yeah. you know what I'm saying? What you saw was reality. Yeah. And that's just that's just the, the, the big thing that people are calling for now, man. Yeah. Is what they see at the beginning is what they think it truly is, and it's really it's really not. Right. right. It's a dangerous game we play when it comes to stuff like that because a person will just straight up lie to you now. Right. Yes. I heard that. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do right about now. I'm gonna go on and give out just a few little uh whistle talk closing remarks, but then I'm gonna let you close it out with some words of wisdom on the whistle talk. How about that? It's great. Everyone out there, appreciate you tuning in to Wizzo Talk. I am Paul Wizzo. If you have any comments, hit us up in the comments or whatever the hell I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any comments, hit us up in the comments. Yeah. Uh, you know, just uh, give us a little bit of feedback, let you know what let us know what you think. If we hit some points or hit, didn't hit some points or anything we might need to work on. Again, this pop topic was about physical attraction. That's uncut and unedited. So we play it just like he said, just like we said. <laughs> so anyway, I'm passing on over to my man. And let him close it on out, so we can get on up out of here. So give him some words or whatever you like to close it out. And this is unscript, so this is just freestyle. Let that shit go. I just want everybody to really stop paying attention to what you see, and don't necessarily pay attention to what you hear. Pay attention to a person's actions because they'll truly show you who they are energetically. You know what I mean? And spiritually through what they do. You know? And then that way you can really truly get to know that person for who they truly are. Mm -hmm. Because a person can say and do anything truly. But when it comes to their true intent, they're going to put emotion and true love behind their actions. You know? And we really need to pay attention to that more because anybody can put anything on. It's like a video game. And you can put any skin on anybody these days. You know what I mean? Anybody can become anything they want to become. If they want to become a dog, a dragon, or, or anything, nowadays people can do that, whatever they identify as. So it's kind of like, just pay attention to who they truly are and, and, and love people for who they are. Mm. And stop trying to force people to be what you need them to be or what you want them to be, you know? Right. Just pay attention to who they are, man, you know? And, that, and that's pretty much the key to it, you know? All right, good words of wisdom like to uh, give out any social media for anybody to follow you anywhere or anything like that? Uh, it's after real truth, uh, all one word, and uh, you can Google it. Every Everything that I have is after real truth. All, it's all one word. You can just find me through that on every platform. Yeah. This is our third podcast together, I believe. Yep. It's always a pleasure to have you. It's an honor. You know, always, you, you come early whenever I ask you to, which is rare. For a lot of black people, I just have to say, you always on time, and one time you was like a whole week ahead of time. So <laughs> I really appreciate you coming over there, being on the show every time. Man, I, value, I value your time, and I truly right. honor the opportunity to even be right. on your platform, right. speaking with you, and just being able to share like my thoughts with you. Right. Most definitely. And uh, this topic was uh, physical attraction. This is part one. We're gonna come back after people drop us some comments, and uh, we'll come back and we'll address some of those comments. And uh, until then. Good night. We'll talk to y'all later. This is Paul Wizzo, Paul Edge Boy.